everybody, when cop out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so welcome to Rated Rachel at my unpaid, unofficial, freelance, self-led internship. Yeah, I get to be an intern again. I kind of call myself like, um, kind of like the eternal intern, just because I'm like such a good assistant. You know, like no matter how high I get, I'm always like assisting people, and I like it. I like assisting people. So, um, like even when, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when I had my own business, um, people were like, hey, you're your own boss. Everybody knows this story. <laughs> and I was like, no, I have 30 bosses. You know, I'm like assisting people. And they're like, yeah, but you're designing things for people's homes. And I was like, yeah, but like they're the artists, really. Like I give them options. I like lead them along the way. You know, I say like, what colors do you want? Like they're really, they're really behind the wheel. Um, so, um, yeah, I just, um, maybe that's like a healthy mentality. Like if you're a good assistant, I think there are a lot of good places you can go. Um, I mean, even like, I mean, like you're even as like the boss of an organization or a company, you're kind of like assisting the client. Um, you know, um, or the board of directors, you know, so, um, yeah, I, uh, did a hair bonnet today. That was fun. Let's see how it turned out so far. It's still going to dry. All right. I, I got the hair oil in the mail this morning, early this morning. <laughs> I feel so spoiled when I get a package, <laughs> but it was like $6.00. Um, for hair oil, and um, I was like the poster child for hair oil, basically. <laughs> so, like, um, even with a diffuser, okay, so you put in the hair gel, the heat styling hair gel, and then you like, psh, like you um, put the hair dryer right on it, and then there's just like it just creates like little bits of like tangles and frizz, and like you just have to like smooth it out with the hair oil. I feel like you have to like put moisture back into it. So that's my theory. I hope it works. And um, I was talking yesterday on social media about how like there are all these YouTube tutorials where like after they um, curl their hair like really carefully and like scrunch it up and like they're like really carefully doing their hair, they take the hair and they smoosh it through to the end <laughs> and the curls bounce back up. I don't have that. I don't know if other people can do that. I kind of, I don't know. Um, some curly girls have told me how they do their hair. They said they usually like do that at the end. They like run a finger through each curl. I don't know if I'll ever have the patience to do that. Um, I don't know if it's going to work for my hair type, but I scrunched it in with the hair oil at the end and I kind of did like the 90s mom. Um, one mom. <laughs> through my hair. You want to see? It's not so bad, right? I towel dried it a little bit. When I first did the hair bonnet, my friend was like, don't towel dry it at all. Um, cause that will like dread it kind of, you know, even if you comb it through. Um, but today they were like, oh, towel dry it. So I towel dried it. Um, like I got like a lot of moisture out, um, because, um, I've heard with the hair bonnet, um, you kind of like, um, I guess people won't, I kind of feel like people won't like play with like, uh, it's okay. With a hair bonnet, I kind of feel like um, there's this point at which your hair, your scalp just gets like really hot, and that's when it's time to stop. Um, so um, I think I've heard I've heard that from other people too. So uh, the way I first did it, it didn't towel dry; it stopped like uh, when it was like half dry, kind of. And because I towel dried it today, I had to stop when it was like it was like pretty dry. So, um, I've heard that with the hair bonnet, if it's not completely dry, but you get to that hot scalp point, it is socially presentable. Just register as that. Um, so I thought about combining it with like a diffuser or something else. I was like, nah, nah. That's what my friend said, actually. I was like, nah, you don't do that. Just stick with the hair bonnet, wait till your scalp is hot, and take it off. So we'll try the towel dry today. Oh, also... The first time I used a hair bonnet, I didn't comb in the hair gel. Just got out of the shower, put the hair bonnet on, and that's when my hair has like bigger curls. And all the hair tutorials, they comb it out, 
Um, and, um, I don't, mm, yeah, I don't know, but like, yeah, then I guess the hair still gets really even and like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like so confusing. That's why I call it like my big fat Greek wedding. I'm like big fat Greek wedding, wedding myself. Um, so like every day I think it's going to get a little bit better or at least I'll learn a little bit more as I go on my search for socially presentableness. Um, I, 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 for my overall look today, um, okay, the hair doesn't count. Okay. But like for my overall look today, um, I was telling my friend, I was like, I just kind of want to go as myself today. Like I just want to do kind of what I want to do today. Um, and this is like one of my favorite makeup looks. I wear it all the time. Um, and, um, he was like, it is a look, just do it. And I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> And apparently, can anybody guess what it is? <laughs> like something in 2021, like there's a demographic that would wear this makeup with this yellow sweatshirt with these pink sweatpants. Um, so um, apparently they said, maybe there are multiple demographics. The one they told me is um, a barista on her day off in a Russian part of Brooklyn so he told me the whole story he was like yeah like okay so on her day on where she a lot of there are a lot of uh, Russian female baristas who are like 28 who work in Williamsburg uh, in Williamsburg Brooklyn um, and on their on their day on they'd probably be wearing like a smoky eye and like kind of like a pale lip um, so on their day off, they would want to wear something like a little bit more colorful. So this is like pink. Um, and then the, dub, the the liquid eyeliner has been around for a really long time in Russia. Um, they said 1921. Liquid eyeliner on top. Liquid eyeliner on bottom. 1985. Um, waterproof liquid mascara with liquid eyeliner was invented in 1991. Um, they wouldn't, and it's just, it never left, never went out of style, constantly, constantly, constantly in Russia, um, to do liquid, double liquid eyeliner for like decades and decades and decades. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she wouldn't curl her eyelashes, um, because she doesn't want to look like white, 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 you know, um, so, um. So she doesn't curl her eyelashes. Um, she's wearing mascara. Um, then the eyebrows, she would fill in all the way, but not outline. Um, she would wear like this bright powder, which is what I like to wear uh, a lot of the time, like a bright brown powder. And then um, this lipstick is um, would be right, right on the ball too. Um, liquid blush. Um... Oh, and the freckles, because Russian women like looking exotic. They like looking exotic. Like, sometimes they'll have, like, red hair. Like, Russian women don't have red hair. <laughs> Isn't that so confusing? I was like, wait, what? And it's like, no. Russian women don't have red hair. So the freckles look exotic. I like that. Um, uh, there's highlighter on the nose. I wanted to put that on. It's like, they're always up on the latest trend. Um, so sometimes on their day off, they would put highlighter around their lips. Um, but he doesn't know if that's really going to take off. Um, I should try that one time just to see what happens. Like, I don't have highlighter. I, I use, like, a shimmery white powder on my nose. Um, but I do have white, um, I kind of have a shimmery, it's called Angel, like a shimmery kind of goldish. Um, eyeliner, so I could I could try putting that on. Let me put on that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um. So yeah. Oh, and then like the yellow sweatshirt would be like, cause she she wants to like kind of keep feeling edgy on her day off, you know, but like comfortable. And then the pink would be to like keep feeling feminine, but like also on her day off. So I mean, obviously, you can wear sweatpants. A lot of professionals, I feel. Maybe not. I'll ask my friend. 
So, um, yeah, that's kind of the look. Let's play the long game. I feel like nobody wants me to put a hat on. Like, where's my hat? Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Ah. And obviously the New York hat. Okay, open the longing. We'll capture it to make sure you guys can see it too. Oh, I just opened Twitch Studio, <laughs> which is already open. It's already open. It was already broken. That's what you have to say sometimes when you're burning in people's houses. <laughs> Does anybody get the reference? <laughs> Every like one million, one a thousand, one in ten thousand, something's already broken. <laughs> From Family Guy. It was already broken. Oh, I had to capture this. <laughs> and then I will read you something on the way. There we go. Like talking like Mrs. Dab Five. There. <laughs> Deary. Okay. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Oh, let's turn off that water first. Water! <laughs> it's just like that Jerry Seinfeld bit where he's like, um, the, the airport had just installed, um, I talk about this all the time. <laughs> Airports have just installed um, automatic water things, like where you put your hand underneath and the water comes out. And he's like, "What can we not be trusted to like turn a faucet? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Turn all the faucets on and leave and be like water?" <laughs> so apparently that's what's happening here. Okay, let's go back. Okay, and I'll read you something. Story time. I'm going to read you um, a note that I wrote to a publisher about publishing one of my books. There are a lot of small publishers. I'm like, I'm just like really excited about that. Uh, I found it on poetsandwriters.org. Here, I'll show you. Let me show you. I will show you. I will show you the way. Read you number by number. Over sideways and under on a magic mark, they ride a whole new world. And the fantastic point of view, but when you call me, I'll wear the blue, the stare of the truth. So, this is called poetsandwriters.org. So, I was just Googling like get paid for writing and like um um there are like all these scams which is like cheeseburger.com we pay you one dollar for like <laughs> it's like really stupid okay so you go to poets and writers.org pw.org you can google search poets and writers hopefully about publish your writing so they have writing contests check out these writing contests Click on the first one. Nielsen Literary Prize. Deadline, November 12th. Entry fee, $25. That means I'm not going to enter because I like to make something out of nothing. Cash prize, $2,000. The price of $2,000 and publication by a Southeast Missouri State University Press is given annually for a novel, novella, or a collection of linked stories by a U.S. writer who has not published a novel. I don't think I qualify. I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> it's like a children's. I guess so. Submit a manuscript of any length with a twenty-five dollar entry fee by November twelfth. This is the website for complete guidelines. Okay, so these are writing contests. How many are there? We want to These are a lot of writing contests, right? Some people can probably read that fast. Okay, so they're like three pages. Okay, what else are we gonna do? Um, Alright, publisher writing. Um, you can also do literary magazines. 